place where we can come together and fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. If you'll turn with me, please, to 2 Peter 2, verse 4. Going to 2 Peter 2, verse 4. Last week, we had a sermon series called The Curse and the Talking Donkey. We've been over the curse already. So this week, we're on the talking donkey. Yes, 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 4. If you there, say amen. amen. For if God spared not the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those who after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their awful, unlawful deeds. For the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. If you'll bow your heads, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Lord, we want to ask you to forgive us, dear Lord, where we have fallen short, where we have gone astray first. And we want to ask you, Lord Jesus, that by your glory, by the Holy Spirit, that you dwell with us this morning. Help me to decrease and you increase. Let the teacher come, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to teach us and lead us and guide us into all truth. Lord God, we know we are in these days, as the text describes, and we need your glory, Lord. We need your strength. If we ever needed you, we need you now. Let that latter rain pour through here in the name of Jesus, Lord, and help us to expound and understand your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. amen. I want you to know that this day that the word of God is speaking of, I believe is the same in our day. I believe there's many people that have gone astray and they reject the word of God for their own precepts of God. And that's what was happening in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah. Yes, they had religion back then. If you look at Isaiah chapter 1 and 2, you'll find out in the Sodom and Gomorrah, they offered up certain sacrifices, but it was to a God that they had in their own precepts. It wasn't to our God. It wasn't to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was one that they made up in their own mind. And these days we have the same problem. You have people that are leaders in denominations, that are leaders in churches, and all over the world, even in the government, that have their own precepts of who they want Jesus to be, and they reject His Word. And it's inside of us all to reject in disobedience, but the Holy Spirit comes in as we get saved, amen, and starts cleaning that stuff out of us. Cleaning the disobedience out of us if we allow Him to. But when we will not allow Him to, what happens? Unlawful deeds come into our lives. Mm-hmm. Well, we know this, and I love this verse in 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Amen. Believe me, have you been tempted lately? Praise tempted the Lord. to get anger lately. Mm-hmm. Tempted to just jump on somebody. Praise tempted the Lord. to just get unforgiveness all deep inside your soul. Tempted to go back into the world. Yep. The Lord knows by the Holy Spirit how to deliver you. Go. He knows Thank how to hold you. Yes. He knows Lord. But many times he'll send a donkey. <laughs> it may come in the form of a parent. It may come in the form of a pastor. But he'll send a donkey to try to give you just warning and give you the word of the living God to stir you in the right direction. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. But let me finish this passage because I just love the way Peter puts this. Going to verse 10. But chiefly them who walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government now, that doesn't mean uh, government as far as what we see in the world today. It means God's government. It means His Word. People despise His Word rather than to submit themselves to it. Because many governments are wicked. And ours is turning that way fast. So it's not talking about that type of government. Presumptions are they self will They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Mm. But these, as 
natural brute beast, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. There are many people that speak evil of God's precepts, even though they uh, believe in their own mind that they are doing the will of God. Some people believe that they are saved, yet fight God's word. Let me tell you, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you'll have conviction. And when God's Word comes forth, the conviction is there. If it's not there, something's wrong. Uh -huh. You've either grieved or quenched the Holy Spirit, or you're not saved. There are uh, millions of people these days in our day and time that believe for some reason that they are saved by their own precepts of who they believe God is. Let me tell you, the only way you can be saved is by the Word of the living Amen. God, Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. He is the way, truth, yes. and life. Yes. No one comes to the Father but by Him. It's not through Christ long to mix Islam with Christianity, as many Christians are starting, so-called Christians are starting to do, and those who are Christians are starting to do and fall away. It is by Jesus' Word, because heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one word of His will. My goodness, His Word will live forever, y'all. Right. And it lives forever in your hearts. Mm -hmm. And when it lives in your hearts, you know the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. 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 Verse 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they who count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes. Now, who's rioting right now? All over the world, you see riots taking place in the street in the daytime. And Peter is putting this out here because the self will people, people of the flesh, people that want to live in the flesh and desire things their way are the ones out there now rioting in almost every city in the United States and in Europe. And it started as a so-called Arab Spring. But these riots are the riots of disobedience. These are children of disobedience we need to be praying for because they don't understand what they're doing. You can tell they're ungodly because they jump up on police cars and they defecate on police cars. This is not a just thing to do. This is disobedience. This is rebellion. And it's taking place in our lifetime. Many people believe, okay, Jesus will come back one day, but probably after I'm already gone or after I'm dead. I'm telling you now, we are closer now than ever before. The signs are all out there. We see all these things happening that the Bible is saying happen. How should we live? When we see these things approaching, should we continue to live like the world? Or should we come out of the world and live and walk with Christ? Think about this, because Satan is trying to sift many yes. of us right now. Yes. He's trying to sift us like he tried to sift Peter. Oh, yeah. And he took Peter down a dark road, and Peter started following afar off. But guess what? Jesus came and said, go get Peter. Even though Peter had denied him three times, oh, his grace and mercy said, go get Peter. Go get Peter. And he asked him, Peter, do you love me? It's going to come down to this. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus or do you love yourself? Do you love Jesus or do you love the world? Do you love Jesus or do you love your family more than Jesus? Do you love Jesus or do you love your tradition? Do you love this Halloween tradition more than Jesus or do you love Jesus? Amen. It's going to come down to that. And I'm very serious. Many people get mad when you try to warn them about certain things. Evil things that, particip that people participate in rituals and traditions. And they get upset. And they want to actually hit the donkey. 